Svetlana strolled through the market, scrutinizing the merchandise. Nothing caught her eye. It was either cheap, cliché, or would end up in used until re-gifted. She was searching for a housewarming gift for her friends and found herself lost in thought. It was the 90s and choices were limited. Finally, her gaze fell upon a shelf of paintings. Svetlana approached. Most of them were cluttered with cheap posters, but there were also works by artists. Svetlana's eyes scanned the landscapes and still lives, many of which were crude reproductions. However, one painting drew her attention. It was a portrait of a woman. It was painted in soft pastel tones. The background and the clothing of the woman sitting in a half-profile were depicted vaguely, but the face, especially the eyes, were meticulously detailed. Something about this artwork captivated her, touching the strings of her soul. Yes, the woman was beautiful, but that wasn't the decisive factor. The artist had clearly poured energy, emotions, and mood into their work. Noticing Svetlana's interested gaze, the elderly male vendor approached. She looked at him and noted his unusual appearance. He seemed entirely gray-haired, and his age was apparent in every aspect, but his skin was taut on his face, and his eyes were youthful, piercing, dark to the extent that the pupil and iris were indistinguishable, and his teeth were as white as a youth's. This is a special painting, said the vendor. It carries a charge. Buy it and you won't regret it. Magical events will begin happening in your life. Svetlana didn't fall for the sales pitch, as she usually didn't pay much attention to such words. However, the painting did have an appealing look, its color palette suited her friend's interior, and the price was reasonable. Doubts no longer remained. After paying, she waited for the vendor to pack the purchase and left contentedly. Arriving home, Svetlana initially placed the wrapped painting in a corner. There were three days left until the housewarming, and she didn't want to unwrap the gift yet. But for some reason, the painting wouldn't leave her mind. She kept glancing in its direction and eventually decided to remove the wrapping paper, placing it on the back of the sofa. It was beautiful. In the rays of the evening sun, the painting played with colors and appeared even more exquisite. Shouldn't I keep it for myself? Svetlana thought, but she immediately dismissed the idea since the gift needed to be given, and she couldn't afford another one. As the night approached, Svetlana finished her household chores, periodically passing by the painting. The darker it became outside, the more unsettled she felt. It was a strange sensation as if someone was watching her from behind, observing her, disturbing her peace. A couple of times, Svetlana even felt that from any angle, the woman in the portrait was looking directly at her, as if following her gaze. Oh, I'm getting nervous, Svetlana thought. It's time for a vacation, or maybe I'm just not used to keeping works of art at home. How do those who have entire galleries of such portraits live? Do they also get scared? Svetlana lived alone, so she didn't close the doors to her bedroom. But that night, she couldn't shake off the feeling that someone was in her apartment, in the adjacent room, near the painting. When she finally managed to fall asleep, she was plagued by nightmares all night. Her dreams lacked a specific storyline. It was simply an incredible sense of horror that forced her to bury herself deeper under the covers. When morning finally arrived, Svetlana felt an incredible relief. The first thing she did was carefully wrap the painting, which had become a source of pure terror for her by that point. Placing it near the door, she left for work. The day passed as usual, marked only by a lack of sleep. Returning home, Svetlana stopped by the market and bought a beautiful bag to put a gift in. Half an hour later, she opened the door to her apartment, wearily placed her bags on the floor, and screamed and recoiled towards the door. A painting was staring at her from the back of the couch. It was still standing where Svetlana had first placed it. 
Taking a moment to catch her breath and compose herself, the woman entered the room and looked around. The wrapping paper from the painting was still lying in the corner, in the exact same position as when Svetlana first found it. What is this? I remember how I wrapped it back up. Or did I only intend to wrap it and forgot to do so? The frightened woman's brain desperately searched for a rational explanation. She quickly glanced around, trying to determine if someone unfamiliar had been in the house. But everything was in its place, the windows were closed. Well then, I must have just wanted to wrap it and, in the morning rush, forgot to do so, she reassured herself. I'll do it now. She took the painting, for some reason immediately turning it face down, and carefully wrapped it in the paper. Then, placing it in the bag, she left it by the kitchen door. She didn't feel like having dinner. Nervous and drained, the woman felt her energy draining away. She took a sedative and went to bed at half past seven in the evening. I'm completely exhausted, she whispered to herself. I need to take some time off and get a cat. How could I get so scared by a painting? Just fabric and paint. It's my imagination playing tricks on me. Svetlana lay there, sinking deeper into uneasy drowsiness. And suddenly, as if jolted, she opened her eyes wide. She couldn't understand why she had woken up, but a sense of horror surged through her once again. I need to get up. Get up and turn on the light, Svetlana thought. In the next second, she sat up, turning towards the door, and screamed. Someone was standing in the doorway. The woman screamed and screamed, unable to get out of bed, paralyzed by an animalistic fear. Her consciousness returned when she heard a knock on the radiator. Her screams had been heard by the neighbors. Finally, Svetlana jumped up and turned on the light. Of course, she didn't see anyone. She walked through the house, turning on the lights everywhere, and cast a terrified glance at the couch. It was empty. She looked into the kitchen behind the door. The painting was wrapped and stood where she had left it. That night, Svetlana didn't turn off the lights. She read, drank coffee, and drifted in and out of fitful sleep. Yes, she recalled the strange vendor's words about magical events entering her life with the purchase of the painting. But her mind, shaped during the atheistic regime, couldn't accept any mysticism. She considered everything that was happening to be a product of her imagination, exhausted nerves, hormonal imbalance, and so on. And so on. After somehow enduring until morning, Svetlana went to work, intending to ask for at least a week off. But around 11 in the morning, a panicked neighbor called her and informed her that there was a fire in Svetlana's apartment. The fire department had been called, and they were already extinguishing it. In a daze, the woman rushed home. The journey, which usually took her half an hour, only took 20 minutes this time. What she saw was horrifying. Black soot around her windows, the fire truck had completely demolished the balcony, and a crowd in the courtyard stared at it all. Running past the people, Svetlana heard them say, That's the owner, the owner. She probably left an iron on, the careless one, and other comments that added to her suffering. Her apartment door was wide open. Firefighters were moving around. Everything, her belongings, walls, furniture, was covered in black soot and drenched in water. The poor woman understood little due to shock. Everything seemed like a dream from which there was a chance to wake up. As the firefighters later informed her, the fire started from a short circuit in the socket where the refrigerator plug was inserted. The only thing they couldn't understand was how the painting hanging below the socket not only remained intact, but also didn't have a single burn mark. What? whispered Svetlana. How did it not burn? Come in, take a look, replied one of the firefighters. We left everything as it was. Entering the kitchen, Svetlana was stunned. All the walls were covered in soot. 
The wiring near the refrigerator had completely burned, the furniture was charred, and the curtains had melted. Amidst this chaos, the painting stood on the floor as a white spot. It was evident that the bag in which it was stored had burned. The paper had decayed, remaining only in patches. But the painting itself didn't even have a speck of soot. Svetlana's ears were pounding, and her vision blurred. Damned, she whispered. Damned piece of junk. She heard, faintly, the firefighter speculations about fire-resistant paints, air currents, drafts, and other things. But her entire world had already turned upside down, and she knew what she would do next. After everyone had left, Svetlana took the painting. She examined the portrait closely. The eyes depicted with frightening realism seemed to mock her. The woman grabbed a knife, intending to cut the canvas, but feeling a strong dizziness, she decided not to get involved. She put the painting in a bag along with other fire-damaged belongings and took it to the garbage dump. After everything that had happened, Svetlana spent a long time restoring her apartment and her health. She changed her attitude toward mysticism and turned to religion, which worsened her mental state even more. Since then, she constantly felt a decline in strength, as if she hadn't slept a single night as if she had been drained and emptied to the core. Yevgeny strolled along the embankment, admiring the sunset. He was in a good mood. A spring breeze, the first day of genuine warmth. Suddenly, his gaze was drawn to a rack of paintings. He loved art, so he approached to take a look. Mostly, there were posters, reproductions, unremarkable landscapes, and still lives. But one portrait simply captivated his attention, the portrait of a young woman sitting in a half-turn. Pastel, subdued tones, and what detail in the eyes, he kept looking, unable to divert his gaze. This is a magical painting. If you buy it, your life will be filled with wonders, said the approaching salesman, an elderly man. Yevgeny looked at him and noted his unusual appearance. He seemed entirely gray-haired, and age showed in everything, but the skin on his face was tight, and his eyes were remarkably young, piercing, dark to the point where you couldn't see the pupil or the iris, and his teeth were as white as a young man's. Upon learning the price, Yevgeny hesitated for a moment but decided not to miss the opportunity and purchase such a find. The salesman wrapped the painting, took the money, and Yevgeny, Satisfied with his purchase, headed home. If he had looked back shortly before turning onto his street, he would have seen that there was no one where the painting rack had been. No one and nothing, as if it had never been there. Only passersby walked around, oblivious to anything unusual. But he didn't look back.